Welcome to Mindset Transformations with Coach Myrna, a show that showcases content and how to change your brain to change your life, a show empowering women who have been abused, betrayed, abandoned, or rejected to change how they feel about themselves and become co-creative sources, attracting abundant love and happiness into their lives. I'm Coach Myrna Young. I am a certified professional coach, author of three books, a motivational speaker, and your host. I know from personal experience that change is hard. In my book, Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement, I share my journey of poverty and child abuse, betrayal and disappointment, and how I turned it all around to live an abundant life. This show is going to give you the tools to do the same in your life. And today, ladies, you are in for a treat. We have the fabulous Stephanie Stanford on our show today. She is the love empowerment coach. So stay, sit back and relax, and today we're going to teach you how to get and keep a man as by love coach herself. Stephanie Stanford. Now, let's tell you a little bit about Stephanie. Stephanie is the love empowerment coach in charge of teaching audiences how to reach inside and access the power that's always been there through love. She's worn tiaras on stage, thrown candy in the crowd, and performed a lip sync of all that bass to keep crowds laughing while they learn. Her down-to-earth tips make it easy for anyone to master the mysteries of love and bring out the peace, passion, and princess power in every woman. Self-love, she says, shuts down doubt so you can take action. Relationship love doesn't have to be so hard, ladies. And her lessons in life love keep you balanced, peaceful, and calm in this crazy world. She's delivered old-school wisdom to new-school crowds at the National Black MBA's South Florida Chapter, the University of Miami, Miami Miami-Dade College, and so many other conferences, workshops, and radio shows. She's a smart girl who has earned a bachelor's degree and an MBA, as well as worked for companies like Boeing, Motorola, and Burger King. Her resolution-driven programs came from getting her butt kicked by past mistakes and from the most incredible wisdom shared by her grandmother. Steph says, when your life is full of love, then you're free to pursue your purpose. It's her job to show you how you can experience self-love, relationship love, and life love. So, Stephanie, welcome to Mindset Transformations. I am so honored to have you on my show today. I'm going to learn a few things, I am sure, from you. So, welcome. (laughs) Myrna, I'm so excited to be here. I really am excited to be here. I want to say thank you. And I can't wait myself because I have learned when you and I get together, it's like girlfriends talking, and that's when the best information (laughs) is shared. Oh, that's what it's about. We learn from each other every single time. We're yeah. supposed to learn every day. So, yeah, I'm very interesting to um, to see um, what your research has shown um, as far as love empowerment. So let's get started. Um, you call yourself a relationship coach, but love is part of your title. What exactly does a love empowerment coach do? I'm so glad you asked that question because a lot of people are relationship experts and there's a need for everybody to help folks, right? There's no shortage of people who need help. But what I do, I believe it's a little bit different. I learned in my past, Myrna, that I couldn't get a man. I couldn't keep a man. I couldn't keep him happy until I dealt with some other things having to do with me. One of the things I learned was self-love. And when I say that, I mean you have to learn how to feel beautiful yourself, even if nobody's telling you. You have to know how to get up and look at yourself and see the good in you, even if other people aren't sharing that. So I needed lessons in self-love. I also learned 
and believe it or not, this lesson came from a man. A guy broke up with me who I was very uh, in love with, and he said, Stephanie, you're such a negative person. Everything is no. Everything is negative. So I had to take a look back and say, well, is that true? Is it him? Is he just a dummy or is it me? It was part of both. He was a dummy. But also, <laughs> also, I had to realize that I needed to do some work because I did have a negative outlook on life. But when you can do small things to have peace and joy every day, everybody wants to be around you. So anyway, being a love empowerment coach is about incorporating those three things, self-love, life love, and relationship love, so people have the full package and they can really live their dreams and do what they need to do. Okay, that's awesome. All right, well, <laughs> I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, you, you know, one of, a lot of people don't understand that if you don't have love, you can't actually give love. So one yeah. of the fundamental things in having a love relationship is loving yourself because mm-hmm. you can't give away what you don't have. So that's actually very good. And then the negativity, I remember I was coaching one of my daughter's friends, um, and um, she was so upset about not being having a man, and she's been – she's one of these people that that's all she thought about. And, you know, I started coaching her, and everything she said was negative. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know how to handle that because, mm-hmm. you you know, we're in, the, we're in the show talking about mindset transformation, but I'm so glad that you started out by changing the negative mindset because nobody can coach you around it. You actually have to change your thoughts and change your mindset. You know, and, and when I started coaching her, I was new into coaching, so I was coaching all my friends and family and things like that. So at that point in time, I didn't even know how to help her because I couldn't turn around that negativity. But, yeah, it's um, a negative person is, is, is very, they're not very, um, it's one of the people you don't really want to be around. So, good, I, I love that, that nugget right off the bat. Okay, so as a coach, um, as a love impairment coach, you teach women how to have, you know, the self-love in relationship love. But how do you use that self-love to help you um, find a man? You know, that's basically Ooh. what we're talking about today. We're going to start off with yes. getting a man, and then we're going to go to keeping the man. So. Well, Myrna doesn't mess around, y'all. I'm going to bring it. Myrna jumps right in. She doesn't, she doesn't start slow. She gets right into the story. What you're going to talk about, tell me how to get a man. That's right. Myrna, yeah, that's what, know. that's what they want to know. Let's talk. You know, Myrna, that's what they want to know. So let's get into it. You're so funny. Yes. Okay. So let me jump right in. All of my wisdom or knowledge that I'm thankful enough to have now has really come from two places. It's come from taking the time to listen to my grandmother, and I'll talk a little bit more about her later. And then the other half has come from me falling flat on my behind. You heard that? You heard that in my bio, but frankly, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I've learned, as you have, Myrna, just like you, to overcome them. And so now I want to show people, right, and teach them how to do better because It took us forever to learn. It doesn't have to take so long for other people. So I'm going to share a very brief story about self-love with you. I was, let's see. So my love and relationship background, let me give you and your listeners a little uh, understanding into who I am. I was married at 22 and divorced at 24. I had a series of boyfriends that didn't work out, and I was engaged two times, and that didn't work out. And... I am now married, by the way. I've been with the same man 13 years. He's my best friend. He makes me crazy. I make him crazy. But he's truly my best friend in the world, and I'm thankful I found him. But I, I really couldn't find him until I was ready to start loving me, and that was your question. So something happened to me, Myrna. I was dating a man several years ago. He was beautiful. Oh, he had long dreadlocks with curls on the end. Oh he had honey brown skin. And Martin, I got to tell you, when we went out, people actually stopped and asked him for his autograph because they thought he was Bob Marley's son. Huh? Okay. Oh, uh, right. yes. Mm-hmm. Huh. So the story starting off good, isn't it? But anyway, so he was really, really handsome, and he was very kind and very gentle. He was a oh, wonderful wow. person in a lot of ways, and I, I could see myself being with him. I said, well, this, this could be the guy. But he had a small problem. The small problem was that sometimes he would stand me up for dates. Mm-hmm. I bet a lot of people have been through this before. I don't know why we take it, but I was taking it. So what would happen is he would oh. set up a date with me, and then he just wouldn't call. 
and just wouldn't show up at all until the next morning, and then he would just show up with flowers or something, and I'm so sorry, some excuse, his friends came over, something or other, but I went through this with him time and time again, Myrna, and I kept forgiving him. I kept letting it go, and I was trying to hold my emotions in check because I didn't want to lose this guy. So I'm holding my emotions, trying not to get too wow. emotional. I don't want to upset him. Yeah, I don't want wow. to say, a lot of right? women can identify with this story. Keep exactly. going. Exactly. <laughs> we change ourselves for them. But anyway, so I'm holding my emotions in check, and then I finally just couldn't take it. I could not take it. The tears started. The why are you doing this? Don't you care about me? I could feel my whole face getting hot, and I just blasted him. I let him have it. And he turned to me and said something that changed my life forever. He said, princess, if you would just not be so emotional, then this thing between me and you could be serious. What? <laughs> you did do you that well. What I said? do that well. Let's give you an applause. <laughs> Girl, did you hear what I said? So he said this, and something inside my head just snapped. And I realized that I was hiding a part of myself, me being emotional. I was hiding. That's who I am. I was hiding that because I didn't want him to leave me because I thought this was the guy. But in that moment, I realized I just couldn't keep hiding myself because eventually he was going to see who I really was. So from that moment forward, we didn't work out clearly, but from that moment forward, <laughs> Myrna, I decided I can't hide myself anymore. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I have to love me for who I am. Yeah. And I have to show men who I want to be with the real me because yeah. that's what they're going to find out and see eventually. So it never to wrap works, it up. It never works out. You have to be authentic. You and, must be um, authentic. In this world of social media, even when you are um, on social media, you have to be authentic. This show has to be authentic. Yeah, yeah. else people are going to see right through it. But yeah, they a do. lot of really a lot do. of women, um, a lot of women don't show themselves. A lot of men don't show themselves, which is why they tell you that. Um, you know, eHarmony and those, you know, dating sites tell you that you should, you know, not, you should be with a man for two years because before then everybody's wow. playing a role. Yeah, everybody's playing a role. So, um, yeah, it, it never I never even so. knew that. Never. That's brand new. Yeah. I, Myrna, you should have given me those tips years ago, girl. I could have saved some time. I didn't know that one. <laughs> That's new. Yeah, they're playing a role. Mm-hmm. But okay. that did change things. That made me start loving myself. And from then forward, I said, that's it. They're going to see the real stuff. They have to. And it's funny, the very next man that I met was my husband. And I told him within one month, we went on a date, and I said, i got to tell you something. I am emotional. It's the reason. It's going to drive you crazy, and it's the reason you're going to fall in love with me. But, baby, you can take it or leave it. That's who I am. I can't believe I said that. And only one month in. (laughs) But I told him. And and guess what, honey? He took it because we're married now. But the point is... I had to love me enough and be confident enough in me to get to that yeah. point. So girls have to work on themselves if they want a guy. It's about self-love. Well, um, it's very important, too, because when you are being inauthentic, you might think that you're being a pleaser, which is another word for it, um, but the guy can see through because we are spiritual beings. And when you put on an act and you put on a show, the guy can see through it. The women can see through it. You know, and you the get you get these inklings that, okay, something is not right, but you never, you can never tell, you know, you can never put your hand on it. But you know something is not right. So it doesn't Absolutely. work. And, and Myrna, really, let me, we should ask ourselves, how long can you play that role? Let's assume this guy does fall in love with you. He does want to be with you for a long time. Can you hide that part of yourself for the next 10, 20 years? You no, know, which is what I said. Two years is the maximum. After <laughs> years, they start to show themselves. <laughs> they only play the game, you know. And, you know. Listen, I love this conversation. I had a friend of mine. I was not her coach, but I had a friend of mine that went on to one of the dating sites and, and got a, and met a guy, and he was hot and sweaty with her for about four months and talked her into moving in with him and all that. And I tell you, as soon as she moved in, he changed. She didn't even wait a year yeah. or something. <laughs> but it, he totally you don't even did. know if he pays his taxes in four months, honey. You don't know if the IRS is going to knock on your door. You don't know. you got to get to know people. Lord, Mark, she should have been yeah. coaching with you. That's the problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So that's awful. That's awesome. Now, you said something else about your grandmother. Tell us about that story. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yes, I was saying that all my wisdom comes from her and from my own mistakes, but she taught me a lot about finding a man. Here's the short story. My, I told you about my relationship past, but my grandmother was amazing. She died at 92 just a few years ago, but she had a boyfriend for 30 years. She was married three times. She never divorced anybody. She outlived every single one of them except the last husband. And the last husband, after they got married, by the way, they didn't get married until she was 80 and he was 70. But anyway, after they got married. That woman's got some hot stuff, still getting a man at 80. (laughs) Honey, I told you she didn't play around. I need to take some notes on grandma. But, um, But she, after she got married, the last husband told her, I have a secret to tell you. And she said, oh, what could this be? I've married this man. I'm old. Is he going to take my pension? What's going on? He said, I'm a millionaire. I didn't want to tell you because I want you to love me for me. So my grandma knew something about getting a man. She really knew a lot. She never was without a man. And these were good men all her life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I... One time when I was struggling, I went home and I, I went to her kitchen. I said, Grandma, you never have a problem getting a man. I can't even find somebody normal who has a job to commit to me. I said, Grandma, what's, what's your secret? And she leaned forward like she didn't want my grandfather to hear, and she looked around and she said, Honey, I let the man be the man. And you know what? I didn't even understand everything she was talking about at that time, yeah. but she told me a story so that I would get it. She yeah. said, Steph, when I was young, I was married to your grandfather, and there was a window in our house that was dirty. She said, I'm small, and I couldn't reach up there. So I said, hey, honey, could you wash this window for me? And he said, yes, yes, dear, I'll get to it. But he never did. So she said, I asked him again the next day, honey, I asked you to wash that window now. Uh, could you clean it for me? He said, okay, dear, I'll do it. But he never did. So this went on a few more times, and she said, I started getting mad about it. So, you know, now she's starting to nag about it. Still not getting done. So finally she said, this isn't working. I'm going to have to come at this from a different angle. So she said, why is it so important to me that you even clean that window? She said, it's important to me that that window is clean because I'm so proud that we own this home. They were a black couple. They were middle class living in the Midwest, I think the 1930s or something like that. So for her to own a home was a big deal. She was just so proud of it. She wanted it to look nice and to keep it up. And then she said, well, why do I need him to do it? Why don't I just do it myself? And she answered herself and said, well, because I'm too small. I'm five foot two. He's a big one tall enough to reach up there. And so she said, well, why don't I just tell him that? So the next day when he came home from work, she said, honey, I don't know if I've told you this, but the reason I've been on you about that window is just because I'm so very proud of this house that you bought for us. And I want to make sure it looks nice. I'm just thankful we have it. And I'm proud of it. And she said, the reason I keep asking you is because you're the only one who's tall enough. I'm small. So that's why I needed your help, honey. That's why I was asking. And then she walked away. Well, Myrna, what do you think happened? He cleaned the window. <laughs> Girl, he cleaned that window. And he didn't just clean it that day. She told me he cleaned it like every week for months and months. So she wow. was trying to show me that women yes. who attract men and keep good men know how to treat them with kindness and love and gentleness. So we still get what we want done done, but it comes from a place of love. So getting a man has to do with how you talk to them. Grandma said, let the man be the man. You know, that's that's a big thing. I'm actually coaching um, someone right now that, you know, strong, independent women, and, I, and I've been there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a strong, independent, take-charge woman, and um, uh, I don't follow easily. But, yeah, men want to be the man. In fact, mm-hmm. in, in my journey, I went and I bought this book called The Surrendered Wife, I talked about just like that, how a woman will ask a man to do something, and then she's on him, and she's coaching him, and she's telling him how to do it, and she's whatever. Yes. And sometimes you've just got to, and it's very hard. It's very True. hard. I mean, even True. things like um, a dinner date. You know, my um, uh, this person I'm talking about, you know, her, her, her fiancé broke up because over, over um, her birthday, she went out Aww. and and and, um, and reserved the the the, um, the restaurant, and um, and he says, well, why didn't you let me be the man? And she says, because you never do it. So Ooh. she took charge, and he didn't like that at all. So yeah. I tell you, it is it is it is a work in progress. You know how many times I have to bite my tongue because now I know, but it doesn't mm-hmm. always work out. 
So that was that was that was big big information stuff. So let me ask you right now. Um, after you heard that from your grandma, there did you mm-hmm. realize that that was what your problem was? That you weren't letting the man be the man, or how did this resonate with you personally? Yeah, that's very interesting. It's still a challenge, and I love, Marnie, that you are keeping it real because let's be real in this conversation. I don't say I have mastered anything. I said I have learned some things. I'm doing them better today than I did five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, but I'm still learning, and it's a daily practice, and sometimes I don't get it right, and sometimes I do get it right. But I did learn after speaking with her about how to be the lady more often. And I want to give an example of another way ladies could use it. It's, it's having to do with what you just said. I, I know a lady here that I was coaching, and she said uh, she was dating a man, and she said she would always run and carry her own groceries. And like if they went to the store together, she would just start carrying them inside. And he actually said to her, will you just let me be the man? Wow. That's yeah. powerful. So yeah. it's so funny, Marta. It has to do with the smallest things we do every day. It doesn't yeah. have to do with big things. For me, you want to know one of the big challenges for me? When mm-hmm. my husband wants to give me directions home from someplace, I don't know how to get home. I've been going to that same house for years. It's, it's, all, it's in a lot of, a lot of errors because, it's so yeah, hard. You, you're it's a strong challenging. woman. You're not. You're not one of those women, um, how high should I jump women? You know, there are women like those that are, don't have any problem following yeah. because they put the man in charge. But strong, independent women, it's very hard. I can tell that you're, you're one of those people. Yeah. Well, and, and I think men still want you to be independent. That's the funny thing because that's what attracted them to you in the first place. You're taking care of yourself. Yeah. You're taking yeah. care of your business. But right. when you get home, they want to see that you can take care of business, but you can also um, allow them to take care of business too. And this is the really cool thing I learned from her. And as I start practicing this, when you start letting them be the men and you start being the woman, then you get more of what you want because oh, yeah. you're giving them more of what they need. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, you, we can go at this thing where um, you're going around in circles, you're being bossy, yeah. he is running, right. and you can go around it for, for ages. But as that's soon as it. you soften up and you let them be the man, and he feels mm-hmm. appreciated, which is another word, and things Ooh. like that, everything <laughs> everything starts go. changing. And um, it's it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. It's an interesting Marla, dynamic. You right? said something so key right there. I, I just yep. don't want to take us off topic, but you said appreciation. Yep. And I know that you've overcome a whole lot of things on your own, and you're, you're a love and relationship expert yourself. You've written books. So... I mean, that appreciation part, has that played a big part for you? Because that's part of my grandma's story, too, I didn't talk about. Yep, yep. Well, it all comes from that, you know, and what she did, um, you know, talking about your story, because, you know, I listened keenly. That's part of being a coach. And what she was basically telling you with that, what she told him is that she appreciated him because he bought her the house and she's proud of it. She went yeah. around. She wasn't giving orders any longer. She was letting him know that she That's appreciated it. the house. She's proud of what he's done for her. And he felt like a man. And, you know, you totally, totally different approach to the same yeah. thing. Well, that is awesome. Now, um, let's, uh, we're having such great fun. Um, let's take a quick station break, and we'll be right back. Sure. I traveled the world for almost four decades, and I met some extraordinary people along the way, one of which was a young man in the Republic of South Africa. Now, this young man grew up under the apartheid regime. The general consensus at that time was that people of his persuasion had a smaller brain capacity than that of the European. That they were untrainable and could only undertake simple work which demanded only a low skill level. Welcome back to Mindset Transformations with Coach Myrna. Um, today we're speaking to the Love Empowerment Coach herself, Stephanie Stanford, and we have had an incredible first segment of her show. We are talking to Stephanie about how to how to get a man by making him feel appreciated, how to get a man by letting him be the man. And um, so as we go into our second um, segment, um, we're also talking about self-love, um, yeah, the, you know, you, there's some steps. You know, the first thing is that you have to love yourself. You have to love relationships. You have to love life, which is part of Stephanie's three-part um, coaching um, uh, format. And, um, and now we're going to be talking about now that you've gotten the man, that you have, you know, we're going to give you some nuggets 
and how you keep a man. So mm. um, let me ask you something, Stephanie. Uh, you, when you started valuing yourself and, and, and um, you know, letting your man be the man, how do you start valuing yourself? How do you actually do? We know that, you know, we've got to let the man be the man, but how do we be the woman? Oh, that is fabulous. <laughs> that is beautiful. Well, I've got to say, you know, times have changed. Social media okay. makes you feel even more than in the past like you're not enough. Your body's not enough. You're not skinny enough. You don't have. You don't look like Kim Kardashian. You're not a Coke bottle shape. Whatever, you know. Yep, All yep. these messages, we always had them, but they're even bigger now. And so part of valuing yourself um, comes from loving who you are on the outside as well as the inside. And, Myrna, it really makes a difference because I'm going to tell you, you know, a lot of things happen with women as we grow older, right? We have babies. Our bodies change. Our hormones change. Sometimes we're stressed. We're working a lot of jobs, maybe one job at a lot of hours. We just have a lot of things that impact how much time we have to get in shape and keep it tight, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but (laughs) if we're not, but if we don't think that we're beautiful, then we're always sending out messages to others they shouldn't too. Let me give you an example from my own life. Um, When my husband was my boyfriend and we were living together for a while, I remember we were going out some night and I was feeling kind of out of shape, a little overweight, and so. I'm taking forever going through the closet, trying on outfit after outfit after outfit. I was on about outfit 99. He's in the other room just looking pitiful. And um, he came in and he said, well, why don't you wear this? This looks nice. I said, oh, I look so fat. He said, wear this. This looks nice. I said, that looks horrible. Why would you pick that? Honey, I look terrible in that. We actually got into a fight. And as I look back on it, the fight was my fault. He was just trying to help. He wasn't doing anything. And he was saying how nice I looked, and I couldn't see it. So part of keeping the joy in your relationship is seeing your own beauty and realizing how beautiful you are at any size or shape. And there's a little exercise, if you don't mind, super short, I'd like to Mm -hmm. share just because sometimes people don't know the how-to of it. You can say, love yourself, look pretty, but, you know, how? So a very simple exercise I did, as you said, Marin, to shift my mindset about valuing myself was every morning I wake up and I look in the mirror and I find just one thing that I think is beautiful about myself. It's a small detail. You can say, girl, I have the prettiest toes. You can say, I have the (laughs) softest skin. You can say, honey, my hair is fabulous, eyelashes, teeth are white and straight, fingernails, anything you want, but you pick something, just one thing about yourself that you say to yourself is beautiful. You literally look in the mirror and say, Stephanie, your hair is diva. Girl, you have the prettiest toes. You just say it to yourself and you end by saying, And I am beautiful. I am beautiful. And you do this every day. I, in my coaching sessions, tell people to do it for seven days straight because you're changing a belief and a mindset. So when you're first doing it, you don't believe it yourself. You feel like this is a load of crap. What am I saying? I don't believe that. But you know, Myrna, because it's about changing mindset. Over time, new beliefs start happening and they come through. So you'll start loving yourself more. And that's about valuing you starting with the outside. So you believe it so the people in your life will believe it. Yeah. You know, that's a powerful story. <laughs> I love sharing. I love great content. And I will tell you, I had a, I had a best girlfriend when I, I lived in Toronto. And I would look at this girl, and I would not see a pretty girl. But I will mm. tell you that she strutted around, thought she okay. was beautiful, thought mm-hmm. she was pretty. And yeah. the men saw that. That's that right. Is, you know, I will tell you, it, we're not just talking crap here. This <laughs> works. It, it, it actually works. I will tell you, you if you go around thinking that you're fat and you're ugly or whatever, yeah. that is what you're going to portray. We're spiritual beings. You know, people yeah. don't understand that. But your thoughts transfer over to the next person. But I've seen it in action. Mm-hmm. I have seen this girl that was not pretty at all by any standards. Get all the boyfriends, get all the men, because she, when she looked in the mirror, she saw she was pretty. She thought she was hot. She thought she had a good job and all the things that made her confident. That's a word. And that made people attracted to her, didn't it? That is actually a a good word. Yeah, self-confidence. Now, if you look Mm -hmm. at your your teeth and say that they're beautiful, but, you know, you you don't like your size or something, that is is important because once you start Mm -hmm. believing it, they'll be more confident. And on the flip side, I'm pretty sure we know a whole lot of, maybe not personally, but the stars, right, that are beautiful, 
but yet they're not they're they're not self confident. They have this inner thing in them that they keep when they look in the mirror, they don't see it, and that's why they start to go, you know, put stuff in their butt and their and their <laughs> whatever because well, everybody wants now yeah. uh, a Coca Cola shape. Because mm-hmm. and, and they're beautiful as it is, but you're right. They're they're seeing that that is a, so that is that is actually very powerful. That yeah, and, you and could I add love something yourself. to that, Myrna? Could I add okay. something? Uh, it's totally true what you said. You, celebrities show a lack of confidence, but the funny thing is, I think everyone would be surprised to know who doesn't have confidence. Because I remember working at uh, some large corporations, but you know what? I kept my hair. My hair is big. I have huge, crazy curls. And then, by the way, I dye it blonde. So, girl, it's just big, brown, and I've curl. seen it. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, but it's been like that all my life. But when I worked in corporate America, I was so ashamed of it and so uncomfortable with it because it didn't look like anybody else's. So I would tie it in the tiniest, tightest little bun I possibly could every day. And every day I felt like I was, locked in a prison, I was kind of hiding part of me, and it's because I didn't have the confidence. So you'd be very surprised, very successful women in all kinds of positions need to work on self-love. It's everybody. And valuing yourself. It's so important. So, so important. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, okay. So now we talked about women loving um, uh, themselves and having self-confidence and portraying that energy. And um, once you portray that energy, you'll be surprised. You know, Stephanie gave you um, a little exercise, but I would want to add to that exercise is mm-hmm. that, you know, you, you, you just show self-confidence, you know, that you're beautiful, that you're mm. hot, you've got something to offer. And yeah. see how it changes in it, how the men respond mm. to you. It's so important. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the men for a little Mm-mm. bit. Um, Girl, you know that's what they want to know about. Yeah. What are some <laughs> specific things that women can do to get a man or at least bring him closer? What are uh-huh. some secrets that you have researched to be true and tried? The I want to hear this one. <laughs> oh, goodness. The, the most valuable thing that I've learned over the years is this. Men have needs. Men aren't women. Men are men. They're not going to talk about their feelings as much as we do. They might talk a little bit about it, but they're not going to write letters to you expressing how you didn't do this for them. Right. But men have needs. And if you know how to fill them, then they're going to want to be in your presence. They're going to want to be close to you. That's why they chased my grandmother, <clears throat> pardon, they chased my grandmother down. There was even a man she met on a subway in Italy, and within 20 minutes, he literally chased this train and was yelling, I love you, I love you. <laughs> So, and by the way, she was over 55. That's when she went back to school. It's you mean amazing. she didn't tell you the word la amor or whatever? No, on, no. Well, she, he, she was speaking English, so he was speaking oh, he English was. to her. Oh, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. right. oh. So men have needs, and you understand what those secret needs are, and you know how to fill them, then they want to be in your presence. They want to be close to you. So do you want to know what maybe one or two of those needs are? Shall I share that? Please, of course. Okay, so you've actually hit on some of them already. It's funny. The first thing I would say is that men need to be needed. Men need to be needed. You hit on it. You said, my girlfriend, they actually broke up because she, on her birthday, I think you said, because she planned her whole date by herself. So what, what did he need to do then? There was no room for him Go because up. she did all the work, did. right? Right. <laughs> Men, and it's so funny, and I made a joke about myself and how I don't like to really take directions to my own house and I know how to get there, but, but my husband needs to be needed, so that's one way. Men like to tell you what directions to go because they're showing you, I know, honey, I know yes. the way to get there. Yes. Men are going to need them, and so in as many ways you can think of, if you show them that, they will definitely want to be in your presence. Another thing is that men need to be praised. Now, women will say that all the time. You don't appreciate men. You don't appreciate nothing I do. I cook. I clean. We'll say that in a minute. We'll drop it. But you don't hear guys saying, I need to be appreciated. But they do. They simply need to hear the word, thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you taking out the trash. Now, I realize, girls, that you have done 3,700 chores and they've done two. I know. I really do. I'm being real here. This is the Keep It Real show with Myrna. So, yes. yes, but the point is they need to hear you say thank you. And I'm going to tell you um, the second part of that grandmother story very quickly. Yes, my grandfather cleaned that window. What I didn't tell you was that 
My grandmother told me later, she said, that was the streakiest window I had ever seen, <laughs> she said. She didn't do the greatest she didn't job. job. Right. No. <laughs> she said it really wasn't that good. But right. she said what she did is she said, oh, honey, thank you so, so much. It, she said, I can see all the way a couple miles down the street now just because you cleaned that window. And she even went so far as she said a couple of days later after he had cleaned it, when her girlfriends were over, she knew he was in the other room. So she, she knew he was, he was not necessarily purposely listening, but he, he could hear. Right. So right. in front of her girlfriend, she said, oh, did that you guys look at my window? My husband that cleaned that insane. window. That is that's insane. insane. That's insane. And actually, if you ever look at any research that's really done um, from psychologists on learning and reinforcement of behavior, basically they just say, if you praise, praise when it's unexpected and praise publicly, it's mind-blowing how much people will respond to that. So I have a million needs we could talk about, but I don't want to take the whole show. But I'll just say oh. men need to be needed and they need to be appreciated. And it's as simple as saying, thanks for taking out the trash or thanks. And I said this to my husband, I appreciate that every Friday night you come home to me. I don't have to worry about where you are. Now, I realize that they should do that. That's their job. But you know what? I am thankful for that. I am thankful for that. I got a guy I trust, you know? Yes. Well, um, you know, yeah, another nugget here that I want to expand on is that um, when you have a man-man, because there's different Mm-mm. versions of men. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's the truth. Now, that's a different <laughs> show right there. Right. Who's a man-man? Write that down. That's the next yes, show, Marvin. That's right. Yes, when you have a man-man, a macho man, and I, you know, I'm married to one yeah. of those, right? Yeah. I've had men, you know, my first marriage, in fact, it's, and it's really interesting, you're right. I, I don't want to expand too much myself, but, you know, as you say things, you know, a conversation is all about, yeah, you know, what, what I'm gleaming from you and what, I, what I've, I've, I've gone through myself. But my very first husband was not a man-man. And mm. I would say to him, sweetheart, where would you like to go? Whatever mm-hmm. you want to do. What, would you, what should I wear? Whatever you want to wear. And I couldn't yeah. stand that because I love, <laughs> and most women love, a man-man, macho man. Switch it around to my husband right now. Nope. You know, I try to take out his clothes. You, you don't need to tell me how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, my gosh. There you go. There I it know is. how to dress. There you know, it is. And, and, you, mm. and you, I am the type of woman that wants to be in control of everything, and a lot of times yeah. I have to step it down a bit and um, and hold my tongue. And, yeah, <laughs> he wants and, – and his favorite word is, you don't appreciate me or whatever. Yeah, and you have to learn how to appreciate them and appreciate them sincerely. Mm-hmm. Right, and um, – it's, it's a big thing. There's so many nuances that I tell you, relationships are not easy. And um, I'll, I'll leave you with something else. I was watching this um, Tony Robbins show the other day, and I learned something from him on this same topic. You know, he was coaching a woman that um, her husband left her, and she just had a baby. Mm. And he oh. went through all these things about um, she's saying that they're making love every day. She's showing him all this love. She didn't know what happened. He just picked up and left. And, you know, I learned something from that, and that was just a couple weeks ago when Tony Robbins says that um, the man did not feel that she was giving him all her love because the baby mm. came in and took oh. all her love, and he didn't feel important, <laughs> right? Wow. And and we know that children, it's, it's a statistic, children, in fact, they had a statistic that 40% of people break up after a child is born. It's a big wow. statistic because the women normally do that. They shut out the man and the children are the most important thing. And, and he just left her, even though, mm. according to me, if you're having sex every day and you're loving your wife and, you know, what even he thinks, that mm-hmm. you have a great relationship. But no, he didn't feel important, he didn't feel appreciated, he didn't feel the exceptional love or whatever Tony called. So, you know, there's, there's so many facets that you have in a relationship. But, yeah, I mean, you know, if we're going to, if we would, uh, you know, just summarize what we've been learning or talking about so far, first of all, you have to have self-love and you have to portray confidence and you have to be able to, to feel love in order to give love. And then yeah. when you get the man, you have to make him feel important. You have to make him feel that he's mm. the most important thing in your life. You have to appreciate him for even the small things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not about 
him buying you a car or buying right. paying all the paying the rent and the provider. Wow. Sometimes it's just the small little things that they do that you have to appreciate them for. And they and, they, and they like that. So It's so great. major you said that. And you used a key word that is so critical and that mm-hmm. is sincere. You have to express these things sincerely. So the point is that if you just say, yeah, thanks for taking out the trash as you're, you know, running by and it's not sincere from your heart, they know that. They can feel that that just, just didn't really mean anything to you. And we're not, you know, we're living in the real world. I love that you brought up the point about the lady, a statistic. You said 40% of people break up after birth of a child. It's not easy. None of this stuff is easy, girls. We're just trying to say it can be easier the more you practice it. And now that we're both sharing some tips, it can be easier. But it's a continual learning process. And none of us are perfect. We're all just trying to get better today than we were yesterday. But um, yeah. I think a key is if you're, if, you know, maybe just feel free to talk to your guy a little bit. Again, they don't like to have the two-hour-long conversations we do. But, <laughs> but say to them, honey, you know, I care about you, and I just want to make sure you're happy. Just want to make sure you're happy. Is there anything I could ever do to make you happier? It's okay to ask that question. He might be surprised with the answer. And maybe he'll ask you the same question back, and then you have a chance to share positively what he could do too, you know? Well, most of them wouldn't answer because I like what you said in the beginning, that men is not going to come and tell you their feelings. And even when you ask them, they don't normally tell you because they're not. A, a, a right. macho man isn't going around talking about his feelings. He That's acts it. on it, but he doesn't go talking about it. You know, he That's acts it. by not coming home, acts by going in his man cave, acts mm-hmm. by, you know what I mean? He acts out his stuff, but he's not going to come and sit down and tell you, you know, you don't show me appreciation. That's why, I, right. you know, I'm out with my friends. They don't say, at least in my experience. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I think if you're in a long-term relationship and you want to stay in that, you do have to learn how to really talk to each other. So every once in a while, it's good just to do a check-in, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I lo- and another thing you said that's major is, they're not going to show love in the same way that we do. You just said when they're not happy, they're doing things to say I'm not happy instead of using words. But when they are happy, they're also doing things. It might not be flowers. It might not be a card, even though you'd like that. That's romantic Mm -hmm. to you. But to them, it might be that they do pay the rent or they do get your car washed or they do fill it with gas. That's the way of saying I love you. Yes. And, you know, mm-hmm. we women love that stuff. At least I do. Yeah. You, know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, somebody coming home with flowers is not as much as somebody, yeah, washing my car and filling up with gas. Things like that are so <laughs> special. That is awesome. Marta, that's why you that's why you keep a man because you see the little thing. I'll be honest, I like flowers. So I have to sort of kick myself and say, Stella, you, you got gas in your car, girl. You got to go buy some candles at Bath and Body Works because he told you to go buy some. So just, he loves you. Keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. All right, good. Now, you mentioned something that I want to bring in, you know, um, about single women. So yeah. um, I know we talk about women in relationships, but what about the yeah. single girls? How can mm. they use this information? Ooh, I, there is something really interesting that I learned over time. And it came from, again, watching grandma and learning from my own mistakes. So, mm-hmm. again, I always have a story, don't I? Let me give you the short version. The short version yeah. is when I was Stories single. Mm-hmm. Now, they, they help in people understanding what's going on. So I was uh, single. I went back to Michigan to visit grandma, and we were at the Ponderosa. I don't even know if you know what the Ponderosa is. It's yeah, like I do. The, I'm from the north. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a very high-end steak buffet, but whatever. Yeah, anyway, yeah. that's where you yeah. go and you have a bunch of food. You get cream corn, mashed potatoes, whatever you want. So we were at the Ponderosa, and uh, my sister and I are sitting down. My grandma went to go to this buffet, and we're watching her. And I see that in about 30 seconds, she starts talking to a man. And, she's, oh. and he's much younger than she was, probably half her age. And I thought, oh, she must know him from church. She knows everybody. So I waited a couple minutes. I took my own plate up there to get some cream corn. And uh, I was stood there, and I, my grandma said, oh, here she is. Here's Steffi, my granddaughter, the one I was telling you about. I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed. My grandma was playing matchmaker, and she was way off, (laughs) way off. She was a wonderful judge of uh, men and relationships, but she didn't play matchmaker very well. But um, I saw many, many times I replayed what I saw going on in my head, though, because she did not know that man in advance of that day. She never met him before, but I realized my grandma knew how to start a conversation and get a man interested in her in a matter of seconds. It was a little formula she used, and I wow. suggest this to all my clients, all my single girls trying to meet men. Here is what it is. Mm-hmm. When you see someone that you think is handsome or interested in, all you do is stand next to them, look at them, 
in the eyes, smile, and say, hello. And then you ask a question. It's that simple. And then you allow the man to simply talk and give his answer. You listen like you're really interested. You look in his eyes. You smile. Really hear what he's saying to you. Is he interesting or is he somebody you never want to talk to again? You're kind of figuring it out. But you keep asking questions, allowing him to talk. What is this about? There's a whole lot of stuff going on underneath this. I gave you the specific steps my grandma used to meet any man she wanted to meet in seconds. But there's stuff happening underneath. And it's like a dance. What it was is that men, even though they're macho men, some of them, and sometimes they all, need a little encouragement that you actually want to talk to them. So a lot of girls playing a lot of games, you know, and so sometimes they don't know for sure if you're interested or not. They need a little bit of just sort of like a hook on the line if you're catching a fish. So you need to do this dance with them. You let them know I'm just a little bit interested. Then you step back and let them answer. I'm a little bit interested. Step back and let them answer. It's like a dance. So this is still letting the man be the man. It's the same principles, just for single girls. You see? Wow. Now that's big. Now I've never heard this before, but I mm. know that you're on to something because um, – you know, we've all been to clubs. We've all been to the social things where yes. a man that likes you is going to look at you. And right. most women look away or we, we at least we're built to not to be picked up. Or the yeah. women that are very, that go and pick up men um, because there's some that have switched the roles and yeah. they be the aggressor, then it's different. But the women that have been trained to let the man do the hunting, right, when a man, you, you know, looks at you or tries to pick you up in a bar or something, your automatic response is to look away or not to smile or, or anything like that. So I like what you've said because it's very mm-hmm. true. All you need to do is smile at them and um, show a little bit of encouragement and let them do the rest. Right. And that's, ask a question. That's really good. And, and asking a question is key because that's yeah. like you opening the door and saying, I'm here and I'd like to talk to you. And it allows them then okay. to be the man and step forward and say, this is all about me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So single girls can still use that let the man be the man. It actually helps them meet, meet men. Yes. Yes. That is mm-hmm. awesome. All right. Well, we will take another station break and we'll be right back with Love Empowerment Coach Stephanie Stanford. We'll be right back. I travelled the world for almost four decades, and I met some extraordinary people along the way, one of which was a young man in the Republic of South Africa. Now this young man grew up under the apartheid regime, the general consensus at that time was that people of his persuasion had a smaller brain capacity than that of the European. That they were untrainable, and could only undertake simple work which demanded only a low skill level. Ladies, welcome back to Mindset Transformations with Love and Permanent Coach Stephanie Sanford, um, affectionately known as Steph. Um, we have been leaving lots of nuggets along the way in our show, telling you how to get a man and keep a man. As we go into our final segment of our show, I just want to ask um, Stephanie, um, women that are trying to spend a lot of time pleasing men, um, right. how do they get their needs met? Mm. Uh, so, you know, as we wrap up, um, uh, can you put this all in a nice little bow and um, tell us how we can get our needs met when they run around thinking about, you know, we got to appreciate the man, we got to yeah. make him feel like a man. <laughs> oh, Lord. Misha tired. I got to get out a, a day planner to figure out what I'm doing to meet their needs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Steph. You got the floor. <laughs> that, Myrna, that's a great question because you know what? If you spend 24 hours a day thinking about what can I do to please them, it does feel a little bit like your needs get lost. And yeah. when my, I'll tell you the truth. My grandma first gave me that little bit of wisdom that let the man be the man. I'll tell you the truth. I ignored that for about three or four years. I didn't want to hear it. I said, oh, she's old. She doesn't know what she's talking about. The world's a different place now. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But, and it's really because I wasn't ready to hear it yet. But what I've learned is this. Women, you've still got to get your needs met. You really do. But I'm suggesting there's just a different approach to get them met. And it has nothing to do with manipulation. Here's what everything my core message is about. If you want love, then you give love. 
whether it's mm-hmm. self-love, life love, or relationship love. If you want a man to meet you, if, to get to know you, if you want uh, to improve the relationship you already have, no matter what, the way you come to the situation, if you come to it with love and not manipulation, then your needs are going to get met. Come be in real, sisters. All that that Myrna and I were talking about, show appreciation, let them be the man, give thanks, all that, it all still needs to be real from you. And so you kind of have to get inside your own mindset, and that's where this whole thing started. You get your needs met when you meet someone else's needs. You step forward with love, and here's why that works. Here's what's so interesting. When men feel appreciated, when they feel happy to come home to you, when they feel that uh, you're letting them be the man, they want you to be proud of them. They want you to be proud of them. They want to do things that make you happy. When you get a good guy and he cares about you, he wants you to be happy. And so he's going to do more of what he can to make you happy. Now, he's not necessarily going to, as we were saying, don't expect him to go out and buy you a new Corvette now. That may not be in his plan. But he's still going to be who he is, just like you're being who you are. But my core message to you is, women, you're going to get your needs met when you're approaching men with sincerity and genuineness and gentleness as opposed to nagging and, and anger. Now, I'm not perfect. I'm fire. Sometimes I get heated, you know? But yeah. I can't be like that all the time. Love leads to love. That's my message. Come to it with gentleness, and you'll get that back. Your needs will be met that way. Yeah. Well, you know, you said something just now that I felt deep in my spirit, like somebody punched me in the gut. That mm-hmm. was my re- reaction to what you just said, because I'm going to leave something right now that is, if anyone's listening right now and, uh, you know, or is going through like a bad relationship, um, what I'm going to say to you is that I, I've been through it. You know, I've been through a relationship right now. My husband and I are going to be celebrating our 10th um, wedding anniversary in mm-hmm. uh, uh, next week. But, of course, we all know that it's not a smooth line. There's going to be ups That's and right. downs. And I will tell you, in the beginning of a relationship, as we were trying to learn from each other and I was learning to appreciate him and not be the person that, you know, honestly, I was that woman that was always telling him what to do and always, I you know, he sometimes. would never come home and all that because <laughs> I'm, I'm this strong, independent type and, you know, yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't follow well. But um, one of the things that happened in our relationship is that I was going to church, and church is – Faith is hearing and hearing the word. And one of the things that I learned from the pastor um, is that you need to treat your man like a king. You need to love like you oh. want to be loved. That yeah. is not, that's not bull. It, right. it works. You need to love yeah. like you want to be loved. And even your children. We all know that when we're moms, that sometimes we've got rotten kids and we still got to love them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I adopted this attitude Honest to God, I adopted yeah. this attitude of loving my man, treating him like a king, loving him the way I want to be loved, even though I wasn't go. getting the kind of love from him that I wanted. And over the years, our relationship like developed the kind of stickiness that my pastor was talking about, because as you go through things and you stay together, you know, the, the current society, you go through something and everybody's divorcing and leaving or whatever. But when you stick together, when you're going through some stuff and you love them anyway, oh, my gosh, that is, that is powerful. That is very big. And I'm going to throw something else out there because I, I live it. What, does women do, what do women do when they're mad at their man? They hold off sex. And I was yes. listening to something the other day that says, hey, you know what? When you hold off sex because you're mad at a man, and what do you think he's going to do? You know, mm-hmm. You've got to care and get it. It's mm-hmm. not a world where it's limited, right? He's right. got an abundant supply out there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I had to even work with, you know, when I'm mad at my, my man and he comes to me for sex, I give it up. <laughs> <laughs> that could be another show, Myrna. That's a whole topic right there, Myrna. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> that's a whole topic for sure. Yeah, it's true because that's what we do. We stop talking to men when we're mad at them. We don't want. We kick them out of the bedroom. We, you know, whatever, and and we can't do that. You gotta, you know. So, you know, yeah. You you just segmented onto another show. Yes, you're right. We'll have you back. <laughs> we, we'll talk about that one because it's big. It, it's yeah. big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we got a few minutes left in our show. So tell 
our audience, um, Stephanie, how they might be able to get in touch with you. I know that you do, um, you have a website, you do some speeches. I know you sent me a, a list of some of the topics that you talk about. Um, so tell us about your business, how they can reach you, and um, you know, your website and things like that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you for letting me do that. So you all know my name. I'm Steph Stanford. That's what my website is called, stephstanford.com. Pretty easy. I'm also on Facebook under Stephanie Stanford. I also have a business page, Steph Stanford, but people tend to find me through the personal one um, more so. And um, I do. I specialize in women. I feel like I can help men or women, but I really specialize in speaking to groups of women and helping them heal so that they can have self-love, life love and relationship love because I just believe that love really doesn't have to be that hard. And so what I do is reconnect you to the power of love in your own life. I have an upcoming book. It's not going to be out until the end of 2016, but it's called Grandma's Guide to Getting a Man. So some of these facts will be in there, but uh, there's more as well coming. I've been writing it for a while, but I really have to force myself to finish because she deserves her wisdom to be out there. Thank you for this time, Myrna. I truly appreciate it. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. Well, I see here um, you, some of your topics are my grandmother married a, married a millionaire, lifelong wisdom to find and keeping them, love your crazy life, feel great, feel great while life ain't. Honey, you are enough. Dirty dishes don't make me doubt myself. Yeah. Have a relationship superpower and men have needs, which is basically yeah. what our show today was about. Yeah. Um, you know, the needs of men. So these are some of the things, some of the topics that Stephanie speaks on. Um, so, um, Stephanie, you want to spell out your name? Because sometimes a lot of people don't know how to spell that as far sure, as your I website. appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. That's good, actually. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my website is stephstanford.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-S-T-A-N-F-O-R-D. Dot com And so same thing for the Facebook page. I am on Instagram, but I don't post there as much as I should. I'm coming up, y'all. I'm learning more about social media every day. <laughs> Hope y'all learn from Myrna. So check me oh, out. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And the nugget that I would like to leave to you, ladies, is this. Love is like a boomerang. It always comes back. So give it freely. It is like a seed that blows in the wind. It does not always come back from the people we choose to love but it always comes back, you know. Also, check out the chapter on, in my book um, on love. I have a really juicy chapter on love um, in my book called Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement. Now, um, tune in next week at the same time for our Mindset Transformations. We're going to have, I promise that I'm going to have very exciting guests on the show that you can learn um, and gleam some information from. All, a copy of all the recordings will be on my YouTube site, which is My Helps, which is M-Y-H-E-L-P-S. Also on my um, website, because I have a video blog um, on my website, and all these shows will be on there. And my website is www.MyrnaYoungHelps.com. That's M-Y-R-N-A-Y-O-U-N-G. H-E-L-P-S dot com. So, Stephanie, it was a pleasure having you on the show. I love this. I almost want to call it girl talk. I (laughs) love talking talking about girls, love talking about women. And, yeah, you know, we are targeting women. But, men, you know that you can never figure out women. So, yeah, you should listen (laughs) and learn a few things about your woman because it can't hurt so, yeah, we are, you know, our, our show is for men and women. Um, so, yes, thank you, Stephanie, for all that good information. You know, I learned a few things. I'm pretty sure our audience learned a few things. And, yeah, we'll have you back to, um, uh, to talk some more about um, withholding sex. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Myrna. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Until next time, ladies, uh, you have a good evening. Bye.